Hello, hope this video finds you well. We're going to look at um, the J1 problem from 2013. It's called What is N Daddy? Um, and this is a great problem because on the surface it seems really challenging and in some ways it is, but the, the inputs are such a small number that you can actually hard code this pretty easily. And I think that's the trick here. So the problem states that Natalie is learning to count on her fingers when her daddy tells her a number, N, where one is less than or equal to N, which is less than or equal to 10, she asks, what is n, daddy? By which she means, how many fingers should I hold up on each hand so that the total is n? To make matters simple, her daddy, daddy gives her eight correct finger representations according to the following rules. The numbers may be represented on one or two hands. If the number is represented on two hands, the larger number is given first. So for example, if Natalie asked, what is four, daddy? Her dad may reply, four is four, four is three and one, four is two and two. Your job is to make sure that Natalie's Daddy gives the correct number of answers. So the input specifications are the input will be a single integer in the range 1 to 10, and the output specifications are the output is the number of ways that producing that number in two hands subjects to the rules above. So if, for example, our input is 4, our output will be 3. And so we're going to do this problem. Um, I'm going to actually set it up in a function. I just like to do this out of good habit. There's no need here, but Again, as you get into harder problems, sometimes putting them into functions allows you to kind of manage, manage it easier, manage the flow of processing. And we're going to start off by taking an input called num, and of course we have to cast that to an integer, because this is an integer input, like this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to hard code this by checking all possibilities. And again, this problem is pretty easy because when you recognize this, um, because you can just map out all the possibilities. So if I look here, we see that we have, here are all my possibilities. So if 10 is the number inputted, it's the only possibility is 5 and 5. Um, if 9, is, we have 5 and 4. And remember, we always do the large number on our first hand. 8, 4 and 4, 5 and 3. 7 is 5 and 2, 4 and 3. 6 is 5 and 1, 4 and 2, 3 and 3. 5 is 5 and 0, 4 and 1, and 3 and 2. 4 is 4 is 0, 3 and 1, 2 and 2. 3 is 3 and 0, 2 and 1. 2 is 2 and 0, 1 and 1. And 1 is 1 and 0. So I can group these now, and I can start off well. If n is equivalent to 10 or, not n, pardon me, if nums, num is equivalent to 10, or num is equivalent to, is equivalent to 9, or num is equivalent to 1, then what we're going to do is we're going to print 1. Elif num is equivalent to 8, or num is equivalent to 7. So these are these two, two possibilities, and then we see down here 3 and 2. Or num is equivalent to 3, or num is equivalent to 2. In that case, we're going to print 2 because there's two possibilities. Elif num is equivalent to 6, or num is equivalent to 5, or num is equivalent to 4. In that case, we're going to print 3, because there are three possibilities here. And so I'm just going to come down here now and invoke the function just like this, and save this, and now I can run this. So I'm just going to pull this up, and I'm going to say Python 3, and this is the CCC 2010 J1. And if I put in 10, I get one possible answer. If I run it again and I put in 6, I get three possible answers. And again, that's right here. Those the three possible answers are 5 and 1, 4 and 2, or 3 and 3. Now just a couple things, a couple ways you might approach this. Nice opportunity to kind of understand how functions work and optimization. Um, instead of printing one, I could, in theory, return one. So I could do this. I could return to, and by having those two returned, that means I don't actually need this last if statement, I just return three. And this works the same way with the exception now that I have to actually print what problem returns to me. So two ways to do it, um, you know, in this case it really doesn't matter, in fact this is a little overkill for this problem. But again, as we then start thinking about more complex problems, this ability to return as soon as we find the answer allows us to avoid um, avoid some just challenging programming situations where we have to control the flow. 
All right, so just let's save this and make sure it works. Um, let's put in five and we get three, and that's confirmed there. I'm going to be honest in this case, I actually prefer what we had before, and the only change I would make to what we had before is I would just make this. Ooh, eventually I'll get this right. I just make this an else. There it is. I hope this video helps, and as always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Take care.